is there a magic formula that slows down aging? I published this over at wisdomschool.com. I've become, uh, uh, perhaps uh, as I'm aging, I don't know, but I've become fascinated by this life hacking, longevity hacking. Uh, you know, I mean, there's, it's kind of a subculture right now in America. There's websites devoted to it. There are, uh, you know, online docs uh, devoted to it. There are books. You go on a, uh, you know, go on to one of your favorite online books uh, sources and you'll find literally dozens of books with titles like, you know, live to be a hundred or live forever or how to stay healthy and young. And uh, yeah, I've been taking uh, uh, supplements since I was 20 years old. I, I had a, a, a part-time job. Well, actually it was a full-time job for a part-time for about six months. I was the manager of the GNC store in the Okemos Mall, the Meridian Mall in Okemos, Michigan. And uh, that was back when GNC was into you know, herbs and vitamins. And I got really into it. I was fascinated by it. I still take, you know, about 20 pills a day. I take, you know, a bunch of different supplements. Um, and someday we'll talk about that. But for right now, I wanted to talk about uh, mTOR, the mechanistic target of rapamycin. If there is a magic substance or strategy that could slow down aging, I, you know, people would want to know about it, right? And it turns out that there is. And there's two sides to this. There's actually a drug that slows down aging, although right now it's very experimental. But the way that that drug works, it, it works by altering a metabolic pathway called mTOR, this mTOR metabolic pathway. And when mTOR is running really fast, you age really rapidly. Now that's a good thing from birth to around age 30. Because you do want to, you know, you, it's, it's called maturing, right? Aging, maturing. But by the time you're 30, you've reached your full maturity, but the mTOR pathway continues at full speed, which speeds up the rate at which you age between 30 and 100. So there's this drug called rapamycin that they discovered back in uh, 1975. In fact, it was first written about in the Journal of Antibiotics, volume 28, number 10. Uh, it was titled Rapamycin, a New Fungal Antibiotic. It's an antibiotic. They found it in the soil of uh, Easter Island, and the, the indigenous name of Eastern Island is Rapa Nui, so they called it rapamycin. And what it does is it blocks the mTOR enzyme. So it slows down that mTOR met metabolic pathway, so it slows down aging. And this has been demonstrated in, uh, in uh, mice. It's been demonstrated in rats. It's been demonstrated in monkeys. It's been demonstrated in... And uh, they started with worms. I mean, you know, it's, uh, and, and there's thousands of, of Americans right now who are on rapamycin as part of clinical trials. And you can sign up for some of these clinical trials at, at various uh, websites. Um, but it's still very experimental. So the question is, you know, if you don't want to take an experimental drug, it also suppresses the immune system slightly. So there's some danger to it. If you don't want to take an experimental drug, but you do want to downregulate the mTOR pathway, so that you slow down your own aging. Is there a way to do that? Well, it turns out that there is. And we've known about one dimension of this for uh, decades, probably over a century. And that is that people who experience periodic calorie deprivation, like starvation, tend to live longer. And nobody knew why until they discovered this mTOR pathway in the 1980s. And what happens is when you eat less food, when you starve yourself, the body, in order to conserve, you know, everything, slows down your metabolic rate. It's, and it does it by downregulating the mTOR uh, enzymatic pathway. And this also, by the way, helps prevent you from getting cancer. Cancer is like super rapid growth, right? So, you know, we've, not, but, but does that mean you have to starve yourself? in order to do this. I mean, you know, these stories of people who like survived the Nazi death camps and then lived to be 100. It turns out that the other big thing that happens when you take rapamycin or when you starve yourself is that senescent cells, cells that are still alive, but they're no longer doing their job. They're just kind of hanging around your body, sucking up energy. This is one of the hallmarks of aging, that when you downregulate mTOR, the body starts eating these senescent cells and replacing them with brand new living cells. So you're actually, you know, getting younger in a way, arguably. So they started out knowing that starvation does this, or even periodic fasting does this. You just don't eat for a day every week. It will do the, essentially the same thing as taking rapamycin one day a week. But most people can't handle not eating for a whole day. 
right? Uh, you know, full 24 hours or even two days would be even better. So then you've got like the five, two diets, you know, where you, for two days a week, you only eat 500 calories because you don't start triggering the mTOR pathway to, to turn on until after 500 calories. But you don't even have to do that. It turns out that it's not caloric restriction. It's actually protein restriction. And this is where it gets really fascinating. This is from uh, the, uh, uh, the journal Aging Cell. And uh, if, uh, they, they report caloric restriction protects against cancer and slows aging. Uh, and uh, then it goes on, our data provide evidence that protein intake is the key determinant of circulating IGF-1 levels. By the way, that, that which is what has to do with uh, type 2 diabetes. This also helps prevent type 2 diabetes, another compound that is associated with aging and metabolic diseases. So it turns out it's not restricting calories, it's restricting protein. Well, proteins are made up of amino acids. So then they started doing a deeper dive and said, is it one of these amino acids that is stimulating the mTOR pathway? And it turns out it is. This is a, a Trends in Cell Biology, published this article, and it says withdrawal of the amino acid leucine, L-E-U-C-I-N-E, -E, leucine has been shown to be nearly as effective in downregulating mTOR1 signaling as withdrawal of all amino acids. So, whoa, okay, get rid of leucine. So what foods have leucine in them? Well, here you go. It's animal products. Animal products are rich in leucine. Uh, this is a quote from one of these uh, studies. Just 100 grams, three and a half ounces of Gouda cheese contains 2,400 milligrams of leucine. Whereas hitting the same leucine level with vegetables would require eating over nine pounds of cabbage or 100 apples. These calculations exemplify the extreme differences in leucine amounts provided by animal meat or dairy protein based uh, compared to a vegan diet. So the bottom line, you want to downregulate mTOR, you want to live longer. Stop eating meat, stop eating dairy products, stop eating eggs. It's, it's that simple. Or cut them down dramatically. But if you can go several days at a time without it, I eat fish one day every two weeks, roughly, uh, more or less. And that's it. That's my protein intake. I, I don't eat, I, I try to avoid eggs. I mean, sometimes they're in foods, but, and, and I don't eat any kind of cheese other than goat's milk feta cheese and, uh, you know, and the, and the vegan cheeses. And I'm feeling great. So. I thought you'd find that interesting. It's over at wisdomschool.com.